Okay, for anybody wanting an introduction to luminosity masks, this is one of the images that is supplied by Gregory Benz, who created this Lumenzia panel. Um, if there's anything you want to learn about his website, you can just simply um, hold the, the, the question mark key, um, and it then says click the question mark, and then click another button to get help tutorials for that other button. So if you wanted help on Dodge, no, you just click on Dodge. Oops, that didn't work. So I'm just going to delete that. So why did it not work? Um, so there you go. It immediately brings you to Gregory Benz, photography.com, and uh, a tutorial on Dodge. So, um, luminosity masks, um, let's say for instance on this image you wanted to really bring out the backlight effect on the edges of these cactus. The only way to do that really, you can't really go in and start painting just the edges of the cactus, it's an impossible task, but luminosity masks essentially allow you to target the area of an image that you want to work on. Um, I'm just going to change the crop of this image. Um, Oops, getting used to using this whack on pen is not easy, but I am sticking with it for once. So um, let's see if we can find a luminosity mask that targets just the outside of those. Um, so let's look at what lights one does. Yeah, it does a reasonable job. What about midtones? I think midtones is actually better. <clears throat> but you can then click on levels and you can refine the mask. So we're making the bits that are selected more selected. And look, that is really targeting the outside of the, uh, the, the cactus. Ignore the sky. Um, we only want to use this for the uh, bottom part of the image, so I'm just going to remove that from this part of the mask. Select inverse, and now if I just simply hit select, that gives me um, the mask that I want. So if I just simply now click on uh, the mask tool, <clears throat> there is the mask that I've created. If I just simply change the blend mode to screen in this case, there is a very simple way of, of uh, bringing up the highlights on uh, those cactus. If you want more, you can, you're you already at 100%, so you could just go um, Command J for another duplicate layer, and now you've got even more. Maybe you want to reduce the opacity of the second layer at about 50%. But that is a really good way of targeting the uh, uh, the outside edges of the cactus. Bringing out shadow detail, so um, I just want to do another duplicate layer. Um, we want to target the dark areas, but maybe not the pure black. So I could go to darks 3. And look, darks 3 selects far too much that is um, a shadow. Darks 4 starts to get a wee bit more targeted, but I could load selection. Dark 4 is a selection by hitting the selection key. And then I can say, right, let me select dark 6 and remove that. So it's a minus, and then hit selection. And if I now hit the mask tool, I've got a mask of darks 4 and darks 5, but not darks 6, so the darks, the real dark parts are not included in the selection. Now, um, you can see there it's done a pretty good job of masking out the sky. So if I now just simply go to something like Nick Software, filter Nick Software Color FX Pro, and use the Detail Extractor, Now, by default, Detail Extractor is too 
too much. It's almost like a HDR effect. There's the before and after. But remember, we're going to target this just at the dark areas of the image. If you remove the contrast slider up to maybe 30, it gets much better. And we already have our mask in place in Photoshop that targets just the dark areas of the, the foreground. So there's the before and after. And if there's anywhere you don't want it to apply to, you can just click on the mask, B for brush, X um, for uh, to make black my foreground colour. And I'm um, painting in a very low flow, 1%, but an opacity of 100. So to get to 100, um, and I'm using a soft brush. So I need to paint a lot to have very little effect. Um, if I want to get up to 100, I have to really paint and paint and paint and paint. So I'm just removing some of the areas where that is going to apply to. But um, you brought out much more detail for that image. Now let's say you wanted to separate the mountains, for instance. Um, Gregory Benz also has in this Lumenzia panel a dodge and burn layer. So I just click on dodge and I can he teaches you how to do these solid fill um, dodge um, layers. So you pick up the colour of the sun in this case. Now by default, um, it's too saturated obviously when you click on that. So I'm just going to keep the same colour but just bring the saturation down. Go down to about 25 on saturation. And that's what it does to the whole image. Yeah, but we're going to paint some of that colour into to here. Um, so we need to make a selection of just that mountain. So we're looking for darks, darks 4, darks 5. Darks 5 does a pretty good job of selecting the bits of the mountain that we want there. And here as well. I'm not going to bother with too much of this one. So I just make that a selection. B for brush, X to make sure I'm painting in white, nice soft brush. And there's the before and after, just creating that wee bit more separation between the, uh, the back mountains and that larger mountain in the middle. You could go over that the bigger mountain a little bit before after. Um, I think we stick. We could still push the backlighting effect on a lot of these cactus a bit more. So um, Command D to deselect. Command J for another duplicate layer. I did that by pressing a button on my Wacom tablet. So I've, I've programmed a button on my Wacom tablet to be Command J, which is a duplicate layer. Um, change the blend mode to screen. You can see what it does to the whole image, but we are just going to apply this selectively through a luminosity mask. So option and mask for a black mask. And now what we need to do again is select um, now I'm going to use what's called a narrow zone picker on this, so I can now pick on the colour of the outside edge of the cactus there. I could refine it further, in fact I don't need to refine it further. Look at the perfect job that that has done of uh, selecting the outside of the, um, the, the cactus. So I'm just going to make that a selection. And now B for brush. And anywhere I paint, I'm going to be slowly building it up by painting it in this time rather than just relying on the mask. And I need to paint and paint because again I'm at 1% flow which is advised for these sort of techniques. And of course it has picked up all the highlight edges of all those other cactus so I want to make sure I give them a good go. And every now and all, so let's have a look at the mask. There's the mask that I've just painted. How could you ever do that without a luminosity um, mask selection? 
that allows me to see where I need to paint that wee bit more. Look at that. So before, after. So that is why you need to start researching luminosity masks and why you want to use them because they're absolutely brilliant.